Hello everyone and welcome back. Hope things are well. Big week for football. Of course the Euros is tonight and tomorrow where we take on the Netherlands tomorrow where the winner goes to the final. Can't believe I'm saying that. We are in a semi-final against the Netherlands where in the reality both teams are crap. They're quite like cheers whoever turns up on the day and I'm hoping that France knock Spain out tonight because I think Spain is the only real good team left in there. I think Spain deserved to win the full thing. I think the other three teams, I don't know how all three of them have got there, but I don't think any of them have played particularly well. But we've got the opportunity to do that now, a real chance to actually get back in the back-to-back -back Euro finals. I hope we can do it. But of course, we are here to talk about Newcastle United. I am a club football guy over an international football guy. And the reality is, after Sunday, that's all done and we are back to the cast tonight and that the club is obviously fully aware of that. The club has to do its job regardless of whether the Euros and the Cup of America is on. We've got a big week ahead of us and you've seen it in the title, you've seen it in the thumbnail. Meeting Annick Castle with the ownership this week, what does that mean? So we're here to get through it all. Plenty of news and just bits to talk about and I wanted to start off with just the obvious, just being absolute crap again. Now, I, I don't ever want to, I guess, single out a newspaper company or single out a particular like, person or whatever. But I've got to be honest, I was looking through social media the past couple of days and I've seen this Chronicle article about Anthony Gordon and I've seen it had quite a lot of comments of just people going, oh, this is crap, clickbait. Everyone just kicking off with them. So I actually read through the article and I, I couldn't believe what I was saying. So the article was basically um, about a, a potential move to Chelsea. Okay, how, how is that possible? So I went through the article, and basically the majority of the article is already like recycled stuff, things that I would have taught you, things that our YouTubers would have taught you, things that you guys would already know. So it goes through that, it talks about the Liverpool stuff from, you're talking three weeks ago or something, it talks about that. And then it gets through to the Chelsea bit. Betford have put five to four odds on Gordon moving from Newcastle to Chelsea. That's it, that's the entire article, it's based on... Based on a bit of betting odds that came out, like, I couldn't believe it. And the entire article has been put out because of that. And I mean, is that what we're getting to as it? journalists and reporters? I mean, it's absolute rubbish. Like how how is somebody actually sat through like multiple degrees and just publishing that? Like it's a, it, it's it's so poor. It's poor, poor. And I'm just I'm just sick of seeing you guys almost getting beer for this stuff. Obviously, uh, as a newspaper company, as journalists, they do have to post stuff out there and obviously to earn money and earn revenue for themselves, but. The reality is, like, you still got to have standards. If you just go pull stuff out for a simple uh, click and grab, people are just going to be put off by it. People won't come back. And that's probably the problem that the Chronicle has because, well, obviously, you talked about them 10 years ago or 20 years ago. I mean, people just won't, don't really look in the same light anymore. And I just, uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I read the article and it just appeared me off quite a bit. I wasn't a fan of the article, but I um, just want to let you know straight away, obviously, just not the, not the fault. And these traps, especially from newspaper articles, were. You see a title, you click on it. That, that's the idea, because once you click on, they earn the money that way. So, yeah, uh, it's, it's just crap. I'm, I'm sick of saying it. But, yeah, uh, on topic to myself now, but for shameless plug time, if you guys are new around here, make sure I get down there, hit that subscribe button, smash the like button, this video, enjoy. Obviously, when I do get brand new news or when I hear stuff myself, you guys are the first to know. So, we are doing exactly that now. And I wanted to... And start by just mentioning this actual meeting this week at Anna Castle. So, uh, what is this meeting? Why are they going to Anna Castle to begin things off now? You, the only the only way you could have ever seen something like this is quite literally in the Amazon Prime documentary. So, if you haven't watched that, uh, just to explain what happened. So, essentially, Amanda Mirza, uh, you have Darren Neal, Silverstone at the time, Dan Ashford. Uh, you'll have all the executives and all the, the higher ups at the castle would all basically go to Anna Castle or they go to a meeting room. And they'll talk about strategies at the club. So our chairman, Saudi Arabian representatives, if they aren't in Newcastle this week, they'll be on like a Skype call. So they'll be listening in. And it's a real proper transfer meeting. So they'll go through everything. They'll talk about everything that's going on in the football club. Obviously, we've our new director of football, Paul Mitchell. This is actually his first official week at the club. The course came in last week. First full week now. Chances are straight away with Paul Mitchell there. It's going to be a transfer meeting. It would have been scheduled after Paul Mitchell's came in. Obviously, with him being in now, the while the meeting where he's fully up to scratch everything, it is going to be a transfer meeting. We can expect that straight away. The fact that we are obviously 
Knees deep in the transfer window. We are still looking to sell players. It's dried a little bit over the past week or so. But again, the obvious point being the Euros is on, the Cup America is on. We have two international tournaments that are on. The second those two end, the Castle, I think, are going straight in the deep end. And the point of this meeting would be to essentially get through everything, talk through all the business sides of the club, talk about their finances, what money do we have at the disposal, what players do we need to sign. They'll just talk through every single minute detail that they need to do and then they walk away from the meeting and they'll do exactly what they said they're going to do in the meeting. So in terms of outgoings, we currently know that Newcastle are looking to sell Almiron, Wilson, potentially Trippier, yeah, looking to sell at least two of the three. Well, some money are coming for them. Newcastle would then add that to the sales we have already made. Of course, the 35 million for Anderson and the 32 million for Minter. They'll add that to the collection. Then after the player sales that came in, They'll then pick the players that they want to buy. And Newcastle have got some real choices at the minute. Obviously, White Wing's the big one. Still, you probably in our three signs, I like to think, after that, at least. Without European football this year, Newcastle have got to push further up the table. They've got to be looking at getting Champions League football again. I feel like we've got to be pushing ourselves back into a position like that. Especially where the other teams are. The other teams have got big matches to play. Some of the teams are still a bit of uncertainty with new managers coming in. The castle have got to be on that, and I feel like we've got to be getting top five. We've got to be up there again. And this transfer window is going to do that, so we've just got to see how things go. But I'm expecting things to go well. And the point of this meeting is, is to basically chalk uh, Paul Mitchell and everything. That's his job. He'll come on now to actually learn everything about the club. And it's expected to take place towards the end of this week, so... Um, obviously there are some dates on there I'm not going to tell you what date they are just in case some of you guys are, are going to be following the owners up to Anik Castle obviously don't do that but uh, yeah it is this week I'm not going to tell you the exact day but it is this week and obviously that meeting will then get Newcastle to a stage where you're comfortable to actually go out and start buying some players once the year was ending Sunday expect things to pick up straight away and that is my prediction I'm going to tell you now but in terms of some of our news now, obviously, I know some of this has already been reported by our channels, but we'll talk about it anyway. Obviously, the Castle's uh, leak kits, they are the two brand new kits. Obviously, one is a, a classic towards the 96 away shirt. The only problem with that one being is that we've already had that classic kit by Castor. What was it, 2018 or 2019 now? That's kind of ruined uh, Adidas's uh, away launch almost because we've already had that kit a few years ago, so it doesn't feel as special. But I'm still looking forward to seeing it in person because I do love the design of that kit. I do love it. And as for the other one, of course, our Saudi Arabian themed kit. That one's probably the least obnoxious one so far. It doesn't actually feel like much of a Saudi related kit. Obviously, it still is because we still have to get our shirts out in Saudi Arabia where obviously we're trying to attract a new fan base. But that's definitely the least obnoxious one so far. You wouldn't have thought it would have been a Saudi Arabian themed kit unless I physically taught you, which I have now. But honestly... The kits look decent. Looking forward to seeing them. Obviously, uh, once the kit launch comes out, again, we'll be at the club shop doing that. And finally, as for a bit of baity transfer news, um, I was mentioning this before with the Chronicle. That I've seen another one come out where a lot of fans are talking about, and that's a possibility of us signing Jared Bourne now. Before the window started, this was actually somebody that I had in my dream transfer signings. A player that, again, i stated so many times, Mike Ashley could have easily signed this guy from Hull City. He had a choice on deadline day between Newcastle West Ham. All we had to do was give Hull City Dwight Gill, that was a top striker at the time, was doing nothing for us. We would, would have done loads for them who didn't have a striker. We didn't do it. He went to West Ham, obviously had an unbelievable career there. And now you're talking in figures of 60, 70, 80 plus million pounds from, from West Ham, where I don't see him leaving West Ham this summer. Obviously, just signed a new deal. He's happy staying at West Ham. Newcastle had to fork out. Well more than treble, what you could have played for, like to Chiesa and Bembo, you probably you'd get for about half the price. He's got unbelievable stats for Brentford. Born for me, he's just not a realistic signing. I would love to sign him, trust me. I think this guy is so good, but the reality is West Ham wants to keep him. He's happy staying there, and he would just cost so much money, like a shed ton. And Newcastle, financially, yeah, probably could afford it, but... I don't think they'll do it. Straight away, I don't think we're going for that option. There's a lot of options available. As I just mentioned there, Kiesa and Bembo are two straight away that I couldn't mind. Pedro Neto is a third that they always look into Newcastle. Again, for me, not personally a massive fan in Pedro Neto, but that's an option there Newcastle can get if they want him. So straight away, you're looking at all these options before you look at a guy like Jared Bourne. Realistically, I don't think we're getting him, and that's my honest truth about it. I'd love to see it happen, but I don't think it is going to happen. And that's 
In terms of news over the past couple of days, that's it really. Obviously, that's the big one before. And at Castle this week, Amanda Stavey Murder are having their transfer meeting with Paul Mitchell, our new director. That's going to be a big, big meeting. And after that, we'll know exactly what we're going in for. But take care, guys. Let me know forward to down below. What do you think they're going to be talking about in this meeting this week? Do you think it's going to be transfer related? Well, obviously, it's going to be transfer related. But do you guys think of what area of the pitch, what budget do you think they'll be playing around with? Just let me know your thoughts. What do you think is going to happen in that meeting? But take care, guys, and we'll see you all in the next one.